I'm Rabbi Dr. David Fox, the director of Project Chai, the Crisis Intervention, Trauma, and Bereavement Support Services of Chai Lifeline. I'm going to address parents who have children in yeshivas and seminaries in Eretz Yisrael during this stressful and painful time of national tragedy for the Jewish people. I'm going to start off, if I may, with a little science and a little bit of Torah. And I want to look at the word rechem, which is where a child emerges from. And the striking similarity between that word and the word rachamim, which is compassion, a feeling for someone else. Because some of the Bale Diktuk, some of the grammarians in our Torah tradition have seen this parallel and have explained to us that a mother's emotional attachment feeling for her child begins in the womb. It begins physiologically. It's automatic. It's there. Now, of course, a father also has rachamim for his son or daughter. After all, as the Pasuk says, karachim av albanim. We make the analogy between a father's compassion for a child when we address kaviyacha, kodesh baruchu, and we beseech him to show us compassion in that same way. But what's very interesting is that science has been demonstrating that the feeling that is present between a parent and a child, the feeling that for some develops and for some is present very, very early on in the process of that child being nurtured by the mother and nourished before birth that this connection, this attachment, has its basis in the brain and in the heart to the degree that there are moments when a parent will have a sixth sense, will just have a sudden intuitive feeling that their child is not doing well, that their child is in danger. So this is as much part of our belief system as religious Jews, that there is this mystical connection between a parent and a child. But also Lahabdil, there is an actual connection between the mind of the parent and the experience of the child. And following the catastrophe in Meirun, those of us who have children living, studying in Eretz Yisrael. We don't even have to get to that mystical or to that intuitive or even to that scientific spark of recognition when we sense that our children may not be doing well. We know that our children are reacting. They're far away. And it's that reality, it's that fact that is generating for so many, many parents, for so many of us, a range of feelings and a range of thoughts. And one of the particular challenges is that they're far away. And we're in Chutzla Aritz, whether in America or Australia, whether England, whether Belgium, any other place around the globe. But we can't be there with them and we can't be there for them. And we're still having a reaction. So we want to develop some tools for helping ourselves during this time and also being there for our beloved children who are so far away and are having to deal 
with absorbing this traumatic, traumatic series of events, the day that it happened, the place that it happened, the meaning of it happening, but they're far away. And yes, many of them have their seminary heads and the Rosh Yeshivas, and they're blessed and fortunate to have spiritual mentors who they can turn to at one level, but you're not there close and present to address what's going on in the heart. And what we're going to spend a little bit of time on now is looking into our own minds and hearts so that we can be better equipped to attend to the thoughts and the feelings and the experiences of our children. And let's be very clear just as a starting axiom that it doesn't make a difference if there's geographical distance between us and Eretz Israel, between our children and ourselves. It doesn't make a difference if we're nearby or if we are far away, but we know that the emotional reaction is there partially because there are children and partially because this is a tragedy that affects all of Kla Yisrael. And we have that kinship, we have that feeling of solidarity as family. And it's very natural that our hearts are aching, imo anachi b'tzora, because we know that people are suffering. But let's first accept, given the fact that geographical distance doesn't make that much difference in our capacity to react, let's look at the ways that it's natural to feel as a parent when you know that your children need you and you want to be there for them. And be mindful, tune inward, recognize that we do react in our thinking with worry and preoccupation, sometimes obsessional, wondering what's going on and regretting that we can't be there and flashing back to the horrible images some of us may have seen in the media of Mehron, the thought does get very, very activated when there's frightening news. And it's normal to react also emotionally in our hearts because we are scared and we are sad and we feel apprehension and anxiety. So there are a range of emotions and sometimes the emotions include feelings of anger. Why was this allowed to happen? Sometimes that's where the mind travels to. And some of us are familiar with having physical reactions in our bodies that when we heard the news, we were nauseous, or we lost our appetites, or we couldn't sleep with agitation, or we just wanted to lay down and go to sleep and close our eyes and just get away from everything that was bombarding our senses. And we do have physical reactions to traumatic bad news. And we sometimes change in our behavior. We become socially withdrawn. We don't want to talk. Or some people have the opposite. They just want to be on top of all the details. And they want to keep talking and hearing more and being very glued to the radio or to your source of news. And sometimes we get affected spiritually, which means some of us have an increased invigorated fervor that we turn to our tefillah and our our Tehillim and our learning, and we really want to do everything we can to feel attached to Kodesh Baruch so he'll listen to us and he'll accept our cries and our prayers. And sometimes we feel this diminution of that spiritual excitement because this is difficult news and we feel shattered and we feel an energy, energy drain that also seems to affect the Neshama. And those dimensions of reaction psychological reaction are very, very normal. You probably don't need me to tell you that, but they are very, very normal. But what I'll add is that it's not normal if you have no reaction. This is horror and this is horrible. And we have many questions and it's confusing and it's overwhelming and it's frightening and it's saddening. And our children are going through it in Eretz Israel, and we can't be close to them. 
then for some of us, the phone call might work or the Zoom if you can do that. But we can't be there for them. Let's first be there for ourselves. Let's be accepting and acknowledging of what we're going through and the normalization of reaction. That's part of our mental hygiene. That's part of being a stable person that you allow yourself to become aware that you're hurting, that you're affected. And if it takes a time for those thoughts or feelings to register, then take the time to allow them to register. Step back, look inward, do some breathing, just allow this to register. It's not normal just to hear this as a piece of news, some information on the news and to move on ahead. This makes a real shame on us. There's ima anuchi that we identify when someone else in Kla Yisrael is hurting, and there's a kol tsarosim lo tsar. For some of us, it's more than that empathic attunement, but it's actually feeling it ourselves, the kol tsarosim lo tsar. We, we feel it. We feel as if we were there. We imagine what they're going through. But let's be mindful, and once we acknowledge what our own reaction is, turn to the person you trust and who cares about you and say, I just need to talk through my reactions. I want to just ventilate it and just reorganize the thoughts and the feelings and, and find a caring listener who won't criticize, judge, or tell you you shouldn't feel that way or you should stop thinking that way. You just want to give yourself an opportunity to express, to be validated for what you're going through. Because if someone tells you you shouldn't have that thought, it's not going to go away. If someone listens caringly to you, it does help the brain recalibrate and reorganize what you're spending your mental energy on so that you can move ahead and you can be in a position to reach out to your children. Now you address your children. And these are, for many of us, teens or adults. Many of them are older because they're settled in Eretz Yisrael, Ashrecha. But when we communicate with our children, of course, we're checking in to see that they're okay. And for those who were present, it can be helpful for them to unload to a parent what their experience was. But let them talk, whether they were present and they're dealing through the ripple effect of having witnessed tragedy, or whether they're a little bit more remote because they didn't make it up to their own that day, but they knew someone who did, or they know someone who lost someone, or they're just surviving past the tragedy and are morose because they're taking it all in. Whatever it is, encourage them to talk. Don't try to dissuade them from their reactions give them the open door to share with you because they may be adult children, they may be teens, and they may be proud, and they may not like to open up. But if they hear that you care, and they hear that you love them, and they hear that you're compassionate, and you explain to them that being able to talk to a caring person about the different ways this may be affecting them, that is heartening and encouraging for a young person far away from home. And listen with that same non-critical, non-judgmental, compassionate heart. Let them talk. Don't try to talk them out of the reaction, but validate their reaction. If they're hurt or they're sad, well, they're supposed to be hurt and sad. If they're frightened and scared, it's a natural reaction. If they're feeling shock and numb, well, that can also be a normal way of responding to all that the brain and the heart absorbs when they hear horrible, horrible things. There is a nobility about being able to cope. There is a madrega about being able to hear horrid news and not to have one's faith swayed at all. And some of us are on that level, and some of our children will be on that level. But that doesn't preclude the fact that in the interim, when we're dealing with and we're integrating the information, that it's having its impact. 
it's not in any way inconsistent with being a Baal Bitochen. If at times like this, you're feeling confusion or you're feeling dread or you're feeling sadness, although we have the value, the imperative of thinking and believing in Gamzu Latova, let's remember the Lamed in the word Latova, which means when bad things happen, we don't say this is good. We say we'll get to a good place. Gamzu, this rough situation with time and with effort, with Hishtadlus, with Avodas Avore, with emotional support, it'll bring us Latav or Latova. But help your, help your young children or your young adult children, your teenage children understand this, that they can break down a little bit. They can let out some of those reactions because it's healthy to do it. There's no false pride to be gained in saying it didn't affect me in the least, or I never gave it a second thought. It's possible that you never gave it a second thought, but that means you were suppressing something, you were denying something. It's normal, natural, and healthy to have a reaction. And the parent's job is to woo that from the child of any age. And this, by the way, applies to your children who are living with you at home and who were not there, but are concerned both about the news, the bad news, and also concerned about how their family members or siblings may be doing. Give them that pischunpa, give them that open door to talk with you about the reactions and prompt them to process. Don't rush to give them encouragement before they have talked with you about their fears or their sadness or their emotions or their confusion. But when they've been able to talk it over with you, yes, we can give them words of encouragement. We can tell them that your reactions are healthy reactions. And of course, at times like this, you're feeling that way or you're having those thoughts. But we also allow our own amuna to kick in, as well as our own common sense as mature parents, that we're going to give them some valid encouragement that as the days pass, that they'll cope differently. They'll begin to take a different perspective. Some of their feelings will begin to diminish and they'll gradually return to the three pillars of mental hygiene, which is getting back to routine, having a schedule to follow, and structuring your day and your night so that you're doing things which are productive, things that are meaningful, including things that involve socialization, and also including things that are a little bit creative. These are the steps, the routine, the scheduling and the structuring of our lives that help us recover the sense of emotional equilibrium, as well as our sense of spiritual strength. So be there for your children, whether here in Hutzla Arts or whether there in Eretz Israel, listen to them more than you talk to them. And when you talk to them, talk supportively. It's perfectly fine if they talk about some of their Hashkafic struggles because they're probably thinking the same thing some of us felt on, on Madba Omer at Rosh Hashanah Meron. On that day, this time, a sacred event, some of them are troubled by this and we don't criticize them for having the questions, but we also tell them we don't have the answers yet. It's far too soon for us to step back and see anything in panoramic perspective, but we allow them to ask the questions. And if you're a parent who has the gifts to communicate with your child about inyane butach and emuna and hashkafa, so matov umanoyu, that's that's precious and that's wonderful. And do that. And if you can't, you're not able to do that prompt them to seek out their spiritual mentor, their Rebbe, their Rosh Hashiva, their Rebetzin, their Rav, whomever they can turn to, where at the right time they can address some of that confusion and some of those questions. Although I'll ask you to take it from me, that that's not our first step. Our first step 
in the aftermath of crisis and trauma is to take stock of how it's affecting us in the realm of emotion, the heart, in the realm of thought, our cognition, any physical reactions or behavioral changes that we're noticing about ourselves. Give them love. Give them that rachamim, that, that compassionate, considerate, respectful concern. It's hard being far away. Most of the children will do best if they don't fly back and disrupt their studies. That can concretize the feeling of distress. Most of them will want to stay on and finish off the zman, or maybe even longer. But give them that open door to your open heart so they can speak to you, they can hear you, you can listen to them, you can give them words of chizuk, you can nurture them and continue your role as father and mother that hasn't stopped despite the distance and despite their age. And I'm going to leave you with one final thought, and that is that whether you're interacting with young children at home or you're communicating with your older children in Eretz Yisrael, let's remember that this is a Nisoyan. And a Nisoyan means we're on trial and we're being challenged. But like the root word nace, which is the banner in the midbar, that those lost from their shavit would look for in the distance to find their way up and back. So this is the nature of the Nisoyan. It is an opportunity to reconnect, to become cohesive as a family, and to ascend in the level of spiritual experience that we take from Yisurim, from very, very difficult, challenging times. And from my perspective as a mental health professional and as a Rav, the way we act in an Yisurim like this is to recall clearly that this is our opportunity as from God-fearing, mature, responsible adult parents to model exactly that, to model for our children that persons of our faith, of our tradition, of our people, of our nation, people like ourselves with Yerushalayim, that we have a model to follow in how we react when we're dealing with tragedy, that we deal with it with compassion, we deal with tragedy, with our faith, our faith in HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and we deal with tragedy by taking healthy means to draw closer and to reconnect. Be there for yourself, be there for your spouse, be, that, be there for your household, and be, that, be there for your children who are beckoning to you and waiting for you and longing for a connection to you from thousands of miles away in Eretz Yisrael. Bracha, Hatzlacha, the Soros, Tobos, Yeshuas, and Nechamos, and may the times ahead bring us back to Meron for Simcha and for Sasan and for Noah Kaved Zelazeth.